Hello my lovely patrons and welcome to another video for the class act uh, and above level of patrons. Um, I'm don't, not sure I'm getting the hang of this but here we all are still. I hope it's uh, you're enjoying it. I wanted to talk today about um, a bit of a mantra which has made my life a little bit easier uh, in terms of managing stress loads and stuff and I was reminded of it again recently in uh, Improbable Press's Spark newsletter. I don't know if uh, many of you guys know about this. Improbable Press which began as a, a press which I uh, did Holmes Watson romance um, books, and I've had uh, two books published with them, The Adventure of the Colonial Boy and A Dream to Build a Kiss On. Uh, they were recently acquired uh, by the Melbourne publisher Clandestine Press, and so they're expanding to um, still be um, you know, with, with those kind of views, but it's... Uh, the original Holmes Watson kind of spirit behind them, but there'll be stories of adventure and diversity. So they'll be branching out to non-Holmesian uh, fiction as well in the future. So if you want to know about that, pop into improbablepress.co.uk. Um, they've still got the old URL for that. Um, to have a look at their submissions process, if that is of interest to you. Um, but one of the things that the um, acquisitions editor Atlan Merrick does with that is she puts out a, a newsletter which is about sparking ideas. It's about writing and um, uh, how how you get through rough patches and uh, so it's kind of a guide and inspiration um, thing. So that's the Spark newsletter. If you want to. Um, uh, subscribe to that, by the way, if you go to um, either to the Improbable Press website or go to Improbable Press on Facebook and you can um, sign up to the newsletter there. It's free and uh, we like to have people um, send in their submissions and ideas and share your experiences uh, as a writer, um, wherever you are in the writing and all publishing process, uh, whether or not you even want to be published. It's, you know, it's some good stuff there. Anyway, the most recent edition of Spark was talking about mantras, the things that help you get through. And Atlan Merrick um, reminded me uh, of Verity Burns' very wise um, assistance in dealing with major stress. Um, because what happens a lot of the time with stress is you're feeling that, uh, you know, putting aside things that are purely external, things coming from outside sources. But we give ourselves a lot of stress by saying, oh, you know, I've got this deadline that I need to do this by or I need to do this thing in this particular way um, and you know you, you're responding to a set of rules and you're not always paying much attention to where those rules come from and Verity in her lovely wisdom once said to to Adeline who then later shared it with me and it was a revelation who made that rule and it was like what do you mean who made that rule and uh, it was like, you know, if I'm sitting there going, well, you know, I have to do this. I have to get this story finished by this particular date, but I'm also doing this story for this particular date. I have to, uh, I've got this um, requirement thing that I've promised this other person, you know, like and you've got all these um, tasks piling up on you. But like, who made that rule? Who made the rule that that's the deadline, that this needs to be done at that particular date? Who said this had to be X thousand words long? You know, and sometimes, there are external people who have made that rule um, and, you know, for good reason. And this is why this got the second part of this particular mantra, which was um, come up with by um, Atlan's brother, which was, how's it working for you? And that's a double whammy that's made a huge difference for when I start getting really stressed in life. When I'm getting wound up about, but I have to do this. And, you know, when my trip to the UK, I need to go to this place and go to this place and see this and do that. It's like, you stop. you got to just remember to stop and go, who made that rule? Now, like I said, maybe that rule is like the thing I want to see is only on that particular date. All right. So that's one of the rules that's been made. How's that working for you? Yeah, well, maybe it's just not. Maybe I'm so stressed that I'm not going to enjoy the thing, um, that I can't see how I can, you know, of two things that I might want to do, I'm the one saying that I've got to do them both. And, you know, maybe if it's not working for you, you can not do one of those things. That's an option. Um, and that's what happened, you know, I was getting all head up about doing some uh, some travel and some writing travel and research at the British Library, but also wanting to have a little look into some family tree stuff. And I was just getting so stressed about how I was going to be able to do all of this. And all of a sudden it was like, but who made that rule? Well, I made that rule. How's it working for you? 
it is not working for me. I am so wound up and stressed and unhappy that, you know, I've got to prioritise. I've got to work out what's actually important. And in the end, the family history stuff, while well, curious, is kind of tough. I don't know enough about it. One day I might just pay somebody else to work out what the hell was going on with this family member who was meant to have been a member of the police force back in the day in London. But that wasn't my priority. Uh, my priority was to do the research that I wanted to do at the British Library. I knew where that was. It was actually near where I was staying and it was easy to do. So it was very easy then to suddenly like just decide not to do one of the things that was making me anxious and unhappy and I could breathe again. Oh, it was marvellous. Um, Verity on the, on the same kind of lines, uh, she's very quick with, um, oh, you know, I've I want to go and do this this thing or I have to go and see this person or I have to go to this place and she'll go but do you though and sometimes I think that needs to be tattooed on my wrist but do you though I we 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 do make rods for our own back we do insist that there's a thing that has to be done and has to be done by this time and in this way in this particular way and, and all these things. And it's just like, actually, sometimes you need to stop and breathe and ask the question, well, who made that rule? How's it working for you? But do you though? And with those three things, actually, so much of the stress in my life turns out not to be external, but self-imposed. And when you recognize that it's self-imposed and you ask those three questions, you can stop and go, well, you know, I've got the control here. It's my choice and I can change my priorities because if it's not working for me, that's it's not going to be fun. It's not going to be productive. It's not going to achieve the things that I'm wanting to achieve with this. So, yeah, who made this rule? I did. And it's working for me really, really well. Is it though? Yeah. See you next time.